Hi guys, welcome to the final video of our five part series of the flower color guide. Um, in this video, this is going to be more of a paint with me sort of session based on the last five videos that we've done. And just to give you a quick reminder, if you are seeing this video first before seeing the, um, the series videos, uh, this is what we've done. Uh, part one was doing the butterfly ranunculus, which is right here. This was a Sunday live. We're not incorporating the ranunculus or the larkspur in here, but feel free if you want to do that yourself. You absolutely can. This is also a video. Uh, part two is the autumn anemone, which is this really pretty, cute, mauvey sort of flower. Part three was this beautiful, rich, wine-colored dahlia. Part four was the fritillaria, also like a mauvey wine color. And then part five is the gravella, gravella, I believe. And uh, yep, that's it. All these were painted on my Paul Rubens sketchbook, and now that has come to an end. It was perfect for the series. As you can see, the end. And now we are moving on to doing all five of these that we've learned onto our main sheet of paper here. Um, I am using my 300 GSM Legion, and I do have the Flower Color Guide book. It is not, re uh, I mean, it's recommended that you have the book if you wish to have a reference for these flowers. However, to do the last five flowers, you do not need the book uh, to begin. You can absolutely start just like any of my other videos and I can, I, I am walking you through pretty much everything. So what I'm going to do today is really quickly using these beautiful set of uh, little bookmarks or little markers rather with shoes that I got from Stationery Pal. I am going to go ahead and quickly highlight all the areas or all the flowers uh, that I just mentioned from the book starting off with the butterfly ranunculus and then we'll go through them one by one. Again, this is going to be a paint with me session. This isn't more of an instructional video. If you wish to get more of an instructional video in terms of how to do these, please reference the five videos that I've already created. I have listed them in the description below. Now to quickly walk through all supplies, as I mentioned, I am using my Legion paper. I am using my White Knights set of 36. And then for brushes, I'm going to keep it fairly simple and use the two uh, Princeton Neptune rounds, six and eight, and then my Zen Art Supplies miniature number two. I've got water ready, I've got paper towel ready, and we are good to begin. So I have all of them marked in my book, and the first one we're going to tackle is the Butterfly Ranunculus. All right, so here we go. We're gonna start mixing our, our colors and get right into it. If you are referencing the book, the image is on page 206. And here I am starting off with mixing some nice color. And we are going to begin with creating a flower right here on this side.
and then going right into my second color and adding my highlights with the second brush or shadow bits or whatever you want to call it because it's the darker region of the flower really I think I really need to blend mix this color on my brush here there we go <clears throat> adding it around the tips as well and again if you have not done the five videos I do suggest to check those out because then this would make a little more sense I am just painting away and the whole point is to use what we've learned over the five videos and apply them for this session here okay so I'm going to allow this to dry just a little bit and we'll go ahead and make another flower of the similar Ranunculus family. And getting some more color, I'm gonna create one. So I think we'll, we'll have our Dahlia happening at the top here. So we'll do another Ranunculus down on this end here. And so here we go. Just again, pressing down nicely on the brush so we can get some nice, gorgeous, loose, um, organic shapes. That's what I'm looking for. The word is organic. Giving your edge a little bit of a frill if you want, because these are nice and frilly in nature. And then going in with the other brush, just kind of giving it a little bit of that nice English red hint. And then just adding a little bit of those strokes to the center as well. Get our nice dark center. While this is still damp, getting a nice blend. Kind of going all around. Now in the, um, in the first video, what I did was I added a little bit of some edging to our flowers with the darker hue. And so that's what I'm doing right now because it's fairly dried and I'm gonna use the same brush and kind of get some detail. 
So let's see, I've got some here. I'm going to get a little bit happening over here. And then just getting some color directly from the color cake so it's nice and dark. It really pops out. Really gives that nice implied bend to our flowers. This is like my favorite part of the of painting these flowers. Just like while while we're doing it in a loose style, we need to intentionally make these little adjustments so that it really pops. And that's exactly what we're doing here. So this one I'm going to make this fairly large. Getting more color. Just going to add another indication of a bend over there. And we have a little bit here. And then I'm just going to do some here. And we're almost done. And I'll leave it at that. So these are going to be the ranunculus. Um, and then we move on to doing the centers for this. So for that, I'm going to mix a little bit of a darker brown with this and just get something nice and dark that I can apply to the center. Or you can continue using the same color. I think it doesn't quite matter. And I'm just dabbing and leaving white space for the center. using the same brush just getting some water perfect Perfect, perfect, perfect. Well, we're not looking for perfection, but this is exactly what I was going for. Hence, it's perfect. Okay, so now we can move on to doing, instead of doing the, um, no, you know what, let's do the, let's do the green stems and such, because I was going to say, instead of doing the green stems, let's move on to doing the next flower, but no, let's do the stems. And this way I can finish it in parts as opposed to just going. So for the green, I've got so much green left over. So I'm just going to be using my leftover green. Again, if you're looking for a reference for colors and such, uh, you can absolutely check out the video where I go into great detail step by step along with a little practice session on how you can create these. All right, so here we go. Let's do the stems right now. And these guys have got some really nice, cute little shapes happening with their 
wiry stems, organic again. So I'm going to go ahead and create some nice movement and flow and have fun with creating this, the stems. Getting a little bit of water onto my brush so I can get a nice thicker I'm being very intentional with how I do this just because of the placement of the camera and everything but normally if I had nothing happening I would just kind of go swoop and get it done so I'm going to do a sort of uh, like a extension from the stem over here which we also have in the main video as well and they've got these cute little elements happening on the stems and whatnot and so I like adding it for additional interest in the paintings And I believe there was a bud as well. So maybe using the same color we can do a bud or something. But first let me just do the... I want to just paint the, the stems before we go on. I'm just highlighting... Not highlighting. Making the stems darker where they start. And where they intersect with the flowers a little bit and then also where extra elements are starting um, this one let's make this one kind of flow out this way and then I'm just adding an additional kind of I want to say garnish almost to the stem um, just because I kind of messed it up a tad bit over there but loose details like that are always always nice and I believe what I had also done was do a nice cute little um, what's the word bud so let's just do the bud I'll draw in the stem and then we'll accommodate for the dahlia which I think should be around here. So if the bud comes slightly above the dahlia I think that would be nice. So let's just make it kind of happening this way. And I'm leaving lots of white space when I in this area here adding a little bit of that darker green in that area as well Creating some extra tendril-like elements as I go along. And I believe there's... I've got these extensions just like I did that down there. I'm going to do one here. Again, with a little hint of a bud happening. And then leave that as is. And now we'll move on to doing the little bud. Just at the top there. 
And so I'll take some of the color that I had used, which is the Cadmium Medium Lemon, and we're just going to quickly add that to the top I've touched very briefly into the green as well so it's kind of seeping in and now I'm going to get some of the English red and just add that in this is where a paper towel comes in handy if you feel like it's seeping into the green too much and you don't like that flowy look just take your paper towel and dab away okay I'm gonna leave that as is I don't mind how it looks I like the sort of blended effect that's happening and that's that so now we're moving on to our next flower so because we're in the groove of you know doing these nice little petals I'm just gonna go ahead and use some um, mauve or like light purple or quin rose whatever you want to use sorry quin lilac and create our next flower which is the autumn anemone and they're very very similar to these but I want to give some nice hierarchy to my composition so what I'm gonna do is make the anemones a bit smaller in comparison to size just a bit so that we've got some hierarchy happening and really quickly before we start let's just pull up the anemones I have them marked here somewhere there we go and that is page 325 okay so here we go I am using the number 8 to um, lay down the flowers and holding my book open I'm just going to create so I want the dahlia to be here so I think it makes sense to have the anemone slightly above over here Perfect. And I'm going to do another one. Let's do one kind of facing. I want to make sure I've got enough water on my brush first with color. Uh, let's do another one just slightly below over here. And then I'll do a third sort of bud kind of styled flower and let's that have let's have that happen um, over here on this end so it can look like these flowers are coming the stems are coming down this way and this one's just protruding over here so just lightly adding these strokes to create the semblance of a flower dipping the tip of my brush in water to get some lighter strokes and hues so these can represent background petals and then if you need to dab any color off I am going to dab some. Just take your paper towel and dab away. And then I am going to go ahead, take my number six, and by now we should have fairly de um, 
semi-dry areas in our flowers so I'm just gonna go ahead and add light little strokes very lightly you can use the number one miniature brush if you wish for this part just in case you're not too like your control of the brush is not to your liking and you want thinner strokes I'm gonna add some of that right away into this so I can get a looser blend in this flower here and then adding some more for this one here And these ones here, I want them to be blended a lot more, so I'm going in with water on my brush and then just lightly kind of pulling that outward, giving it some nice shading almost, so to speak. A little bit of that on this here too and then just like we did the overlapping for these guys here I'm doing a little bit of that on here too Needs to be a tad darker, but that's okay. You want to keep some elements very loose and open as opposed to just completely detailed all over. But always adds a nice softness when you don't add too much detail. And then this one just doesn't have any So I'm adding a little bit of that here. All right, great. So we've got these guys done. Let's go ahead and add some stems to it and then we'll end off with doing the center. So the stems again, I'm gonna be using my leftover color. Um, yeah, I'll use the number six. So leftover green that I've got. I'm switching up the green to be a little more brighter as opposed to more wooded. So I'm using some green. It's just to give some differentiation between the two greens that we have happening so far. And just mixing a bit more okay perfect and pushing all the color to where the flower like where it meets the flower let's do another one over on this end I'm not caring as much about the thickness of the bottom here because we can always fluff it out with or thicken the bottom by adding more strands of grass or other green elements so it's totally okay and this guy needs one he could have been coming from this stem as well so lots of different ways to sort of have your composition connect and flow so pay attention to these little details. Also my mistakes as I kind of go along because if you see the mistakes, you see how I fix it, it kind of gives you an idea of how to sort of do your own thing. Now 
Now I might decide to touch the colors up a little bit later, but for now we're moving on to doing the centers and I will use I'll use the miniature brush to get some yellow and the nice bright yellow with a little bit of like an orange yellow happening. So I'll start with this one first because it should be the driest of them all. And just loosely adding a couple of dots over there. And then we're moving on to getting more of an orangey yellow. Um, so like a medium orange yellow. I'm not quite brushing or washing my brush. I'm just getting the color directly from there. And I want that two-tone look. in my yellow center. So we've got the dark we've got the light yellow, we've got the darker yellow. Gives it some nice depth, feeling of depth at least. And we'll add a little bit of green in a bit. I'm going to mix some of this yellow, I'm not washing it off my brush. I'm just going to mix some of this yellow into the green on my palette and the color I get I'm going to go in and mix it in with the centers that we have so far and again it's to sort of really make this stand out jump out pop out however you want to describe that I need a little bit more green So I ended up taking that yellowish green. Not a fan of yellowish green, but sometimes it does the job and can't dispute, so I don't discriminate. I'm just lightly dabbing. Perfect. And that's that for the for these guys. Actually, let's do a little little bit of uh, the leaves for them before we call it quits. Now I used green green for them for them uh, and so I'm getting some of that green using my number six and let's also do some I didn't do any buds and their buds are the most fun to do in my opinion. So let's do the uh, the leaves first. So I believe this area here could use a little bit of fluffing and semblance of a green leaf. We'll do one happening over here as well. Their leaves have like three tiers to it, so I'm just kind of creating that full round leaf to indicate that. Adding another stem here because I want to do a, a stem that has a bud, because their buds are quite fun, as I mentioned. And I think it would be nice if we're doing our dahlia here to have a bud protruding maybe over here. No, actually, let's do one over here. Oh, 
like this. And it's more of a purple hue, so I'm going to switch my brush and get and get some of the um, Quinn. Actually, first probably get some of the regular color. And then pushing all the dark color down to the bottom. Now I'm just going to wash off some of the color, dab it on there, and just fill up the gap in here, drawing some color from the two little dark areas that we have. Let's do one more bud, because this one is not satisfying enough to me. So I'm going to do one more, and let's have that one kind of protruding from here. And um, this also needs a little bit of just a slice of green there, and then let's go in with the purple and create our round. curves around it. There we go. I'm going to add a touch of a darker purple on the edge so it seeps in. And that's great. I love it. Uh, I know it's hanging in the air so let's sort of attach that in nicely. To a stem that goes all the way down. Yeah, why not? This is this is not bad at all. I like this. I'll add one stem kind of it could seem like it's attached or it could be not attached and I just want to do a leaf, like a light leaf. Perfect. And I'm just lightly adding some color or some additional leaves kind of protruding just to fill up the areas and add more visual interest. But you don't want to add too much. If you want to leave it minimalistic, you absolutely can. I'm just adding additional elements 